Good morning again, colleagues. Um, I will start um, the webinar now. All right, um, my name is Lazo Lanopeku. Um, I will be your facilitator for the webinar for today. Um, let me welcome all the participants uh, for joining us in this uh, important webinar where we are giving uh, us as SAPRA and the inspection bodies to engage and um, uh, sort um, all certain issues that we might be having in order to deliver uh, quality uh, treatments or diagnosis in our patients that we, we normally work with. My name is Lazo Landopeku. I'm the medical physicist here at SAPRA and um, I'm under X-ray licensing. And um, I will uh, firstly um, try to have a welcoming note from Matt Lappi, uh, who is our manager uh, here in Validation Control. Um, so we will have Matt Lappi to welcome us. And then we will have our, our second speaker, which is Mr. Mapope, who is our deputy uh, manager in Validation Control. Um, if Mem Tapi and uh, Mr. Mapope can show their faces just maybe uh, for a few seconds while um, I introduce them. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I will hand over to you uh, to welcome us. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Lazola, um, for the uh, introductory note. Um, I just want to, you know, welcome everyone um, who is, you know, an attendee and participant in our first, our very first, you know, webinar with the inspection bodies. We've been really looking forward to having this engagement with you for a very long time. I think since, you know, radiation control has been part of uh, SAPRA, you know, um, we've, we've really wanted to have this engagement and I just want to thank my colleague and um, for having made this to be possible. And we just also want to apologize that unfortunately last year in December, obviously with all the uh, quarterly reporting, you know, we are unable to fulfill the, you know, the initial invite, but we are here today and um, we're really looking forward to a very successful and productive, you know, uh, interaction. So, you know, the whole aim of us having this webinar basically is to you know to you know to be able to have an open um, uh, um, you know platform you know so that where you guys as um, inspection bodies you know are able to you know to come to us and be able to you know either you know uh, uh, you know um, you know you know come up with either suggestions or you know whatever you know challenges that you're also having in in your day-to-day -day work uh, that you know um yeah that you're experiencing then we also have to say okay we need to support you and obviously not as well forgetting the um you know the regulations and obviously you know the the requirements for 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 you know um you know quality control radiation protection in general uh, in terms of our patients and even even workers so just to give you a brief um you know of 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 basically you know what the proceedings will be for today is um you know is that you know we'll have obviously presentation from sapra and then we've also invited sanas i hope that they are here i'm not sure uh, i can't see the list but i hope that um sapra uh, sanas will also you know have a word or two then we're also planning to have presentations from our side to sort of take you through what is the approval processes um, and you know what are our requirements from you know from 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 SAPRA in terms of what requirements we have uh, towards inspection bodies, um, and then obviously you know yeah you know you know in terms of even you know the uh, electronic submission how it must be done then you know we can definitely have an engagement on that, and then at the end of the program then there will be a session of. Um, questions and answers that I think Ngundi says allocated for an hour. So we uh, that will start from 11 o'clock. So um, just to give you a brief, um, basically, you know, why or basically why do we have inspection bodies? Maybe most of you have been in, 
in this fraternity for a very, very long time. I might have or know a little bit of history of where it's, it all started, but I'm not going to get into that for today. Uh, but what I think I want to sort of relay to everyone here on the call is that basically, you know, inspection bodies and SANAS, you know, um, you, you know, as the entities, you are, you are actually enabling us as SAPRA and radiation control to be able to get um, uh, um, um, you know, to get our license holders actually to be able to, um, you know, to adhere to our regulations and requirements. So basically, you are really assisting us. So that's what I wanted to bring across. That please be aware that the services that you are doing, you are actually helping us as SAPRA and as a regulator to ensure that you know, patient safety to ensure that equipment is working properly. And, you know, so all of those things that you're doing as inspectors, you are really helping us as SAPRA to actually fulfill our mandate. And obviously we're also in partnership with, with um, SANAS that is helping us with the accreditation and making sure that as inspection bodies, you've got the relevant knowledge and um, my apologies. And then you've got, um, got the you know, relevant knowledge and expertise and the know-how of obviously how to do the quality control. So they are doing that accreditation on our behalf. So I really wanted to share with you that please be aware that we are in one team and then that you guys are actually rendering or helping us to actually render the services of having uh, radiation protection and safety of our patients and our workers to be uh, so that you know our license holders can actually be compliant so you're really doing a very fantastic job so um yeah so thank you so much uh, colleagues uh, you know for for even taking time to be here to be in this meeting as i said it's our first engagement and we're planning to have another one probably later on in the year so that whatever you have as questions and concerns then later on we can be able to come with uh, proposals or recommendations or solutions um so obviously you know part of the um the mandate that um SANAS is also offering for us is that, you know, there is, you know, we, we have an obligation due to the uh, memorandum of understanding that we have with SANAS to ensure that they have an accreditation program that we look at and we approve and then we give it a go ahead. And then we also have a, an obligation as radiation control SAPRA to also attend the STC meetings as well. And then we also have an obligation to also ensure that the technical you know, uh, documents that are put together, for example, like TR78, uh, now the latest version is 08. So we also you know, have to put or give an input on what or how that document will look like. So an engagement like this will help us to know that now with the coming TR78, we, we probably want to go into version 09, you know, so when the engagement that we're having right now with you uh, as inspection bodies will guide us to see what are some of the things that are missing and so that we can include them. If maybe there's no clarity or there are certain uh, clauses that are not clear in the TRS uh, 78, for example, uh, you know, we can put that on today's talk to say, you know, we need clarity here or we do not understand or, you know, these are our suggestions. So basically, we are here to work together, uh, colleagues, and as I said, that you are really, you know, assisting us in fulfilling our mandate as a regulator. So thank you very much, and we really look forward to a successful uh, interaction. So over to you, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Shabi. Um, I will call uh, Mr. Mkondisi, who is going to give us um, the talk of the day. And I will request that the, uh, all of the us as participants, we can uh, note down the questions while he is presenting. And then um, after the presentation, there will be a session for, for the question and answering. Um, over to you, Mr. Mapope. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, Homoto mentioned that uh, she will also like maybe Sanas just to greet the colleagues. And I think we can do that now before we jump to the presentation. I saw Peggy uh, Silent uh, I'm not sure who else from Sanas, but maybe they can just briefly introduce themselves and, and greet the, the colleagues. Um, 
and also can you enable Peggy Sile uh, to 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 be able just to talk uh, briefly? Thank you. And Bexila, you can just uh, introduce your other colleagues that are online as well. Thanks. Good morning, colleagues. Um, my name is Peggy Silendlovu, and yes, I'm from SANAS. Um, I'm the assessment specialist at SANAS. Let me just see if my manager is here. Because uh, if he is, He's the one that needs to talk. I don't see his name, so it's fine. Um, dear colleagues, um, I've already mentioned I'll be representing Sanas, but since this, the audience here is already accredited inspection bodies, I won't say much, um, except maybe to highlight the two guidance documents for, for QA X-ray, and that is the TR-78, and that is a joint document between um, SAPRA and SANAS. And it basically talks to the requirements um, for the diagnostic X-ray imaging systems and those of accreditation to 17020. Right, so that is the TR78 document. The second document um, that the inspection body should be aware of is the P15 document. And this is also a guidance document within SANAS though. And it's for accreditation of inspection bodies within the regulated domain. Um, which QX ray would fall under and, and voluntary domain and in brackets, if I can put it like that. So, yes, um, colleagues, that is our role. Um, you can almost say that we as SANAS are tasked by, by SAPRA to go out there and, and, and basically help them to fulfill their mandate by accrediting the inspection bodies. Um, in terms of accreditation, the foundation of accreditation will, is based on technical competence. So what we as sellers will primarily assess uh, when we go out there to assess inspection bodies is their ability, meaning their technical competence to conduct um, the inspection activities. And um, as per the scopes, um, and as listed by that document, is it the separate document, um, Homozo would know it, um, more than I would. So yeah, we would accredit them as per their specific scopes. Um, yeah, I, I think that should be it, unless if somebody has a question for me, maybe I can answer to that. I think maybe that will be easier because as like I've already said, the audience here is already accredited. So they know the accreditation process of application, um, documentation review, initial assessment, or maybe pre-assessment, initial assessment, and surveillance assessment. So yeah, maybe we should handle it like that. Thank you, colleagues. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thanks, 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 madam. Um, uh, so um, let me also introduce myself. Um, I hope colleagues can see me. Um, my name is Mpondesi uh, Mapope, and I uh, was appointed as the deputy uh, uh, manager for X-ray licensing uh, in July 2021. Uh, I have interacted with some of the colleagues um, uh, uh, on various issues and all of that, but um, so we saw the need to formalize the engagement um, uh, with the inspection bodies as they play the important role, as my colleagues um, already mentioned. So really today it's about uh, engagement. I can already see on the chat uh, some of our colleagues, they want to know if we, they're going to ask questions. Uh, you can feel free to type your questions on the chat, but uh, we have dedicated an hour of engagement where you can ask your questions, uh, we will attempt to answer. We will put down some of the questions for, uh, for for future references and see how we can improve. Uh, uh, also, we have questions as well, so hopefully we can have a, a, a fruitful dialogue. So my question, my presentation is also basic. Most of the things you guys will you will already uh, be aware of, so I'm not really uh, sharing anything new but just to remind each other of where where we are and um, 
where we hoped to be. I, I, I don't know if you can see my presentation. I'll just close the camera for now. Um, yes, sir, we can. All right, thank you very much. So, there is a very important role um, uh, inspection bodies is, is, is playing in the regulatory space uh, for, for, for the regulation of uh, X-ray devices uh, concerning the diagnostic X-ray and also the dental um, uh, X-rays. So um, in, in a nutshell, uh, inspection bodies, they assist us with um, uh, acceptance test of those equipment and they also assist us on the <clears throat> routine quality control tests that needs to be performed um, uh, for those uh, machines. So also, I mean, um, this this uh, uh, rules that they fulfill, uh, unfortunately, they have to go through a process for them to be able to accredited to 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 perform um, those tasks that they 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 they, they are, or the scopes that they are approved to 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 perform. Um, so the hospitals uh, or the 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 license holders that we license for for the use of those equipment, they are, are, are one of their condition is that they must keep a record of a, a quality control test and also uh, that forms part of their quality assurance program or quality management program uh, to ensure safety use of the equipment. So um the competence the competence of uh, inspection bodies will obviously be more as assessed by sana as Bexilla has said um and and we we then take the cue from there to also issue a license uh, uh to, to 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 the inspection bodies so currently inspection bodies they assist us in the medical use uh which is uh, mostly the diagnosis diagnostic x-rays and then also in the dental use um, uh, of x-rays. So the colleagues already mentioned some of the documents that are, are important. I learned a new one today that I was not sure of, but from the uh, from the SANAS and SAPRA side, uh, uh, our common document is the TR78. Um, so the purpose of this document is to define the specific technical requirements to be met by the, the inspection bodies uh, that are testing diagnostic uh, X-ray imaging systems. And then from our side at, at SAPRA, uh, uh, the guideline that we have, um, uh, you, you guys, you, you fam famously know this document as a diagnostic QC version 9 of 2015. Uh, so I, I just need to mention that uh, this guideline it, we, we change the template so technically the information should ex exactly be the same as the one previously before uh, we only just change the the the, um, the the face of it so hence we didn't requ request for you guys to comment on it uh, in future if we have to change any uh, content of that document we will have to circulate it for comments uh, 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 from you guys. So it's the same as the um, the one for dental diagnostic QC. Again, it's the same. We we change the, the look of it so that it's aligned with the SAPRA quality management system. And again, if we if we decide to change or if there are any changes on the content, it will be um, circulated for comments by by the industry as it is very important you guys are also now experts in the in the in the subject so it will be nice to have your opinion on 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 um on what we are putting out there so in, in those two documents um mostly uh, the important is that uh, it it sets out um what what type of qc needs to be done and it also sets out some of the frequencies that uh, uh, those those tests needs to be done. So there are tests that, that has to be done um, uh, on acceptance test, uh, which means when uh, when the machine is is newly installed, 
and then there are tests that are then have to be done on a routine basis uh, in most of the diagnostic image imaging um, uh, we recommend one year and then in, dent in dental uh, x-rays is three years except for the CBCT is also one is, 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 is also one year so this is based on uh, risk assessment and then there are other tests that are done by the license holder those tests can be done on a daily weekly monthly and all of that and they they are documented um, accordingly so uh, usually the test frequencies are determined by the risk of the um, the risk associated with the equipment um, bear, bear in mind that our inspectors uh, as we have a, an inspectorate section uh, we also have um, a program of inspecting um, uh, 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 these facilities although we might not be taking measurements like uh, uh, the inspection to bodies will do but then we'll have to go through your uh, reports that you you are required to um, uh, 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 leave with the license holder or so the license holder can file that um, uh, that, that uh, res those your results or your report so our inspectors when they inspect whether they are doing an investigation uh, person an incident or whether it's just routine checking compliance and things like that so we also look for the report from the inspection bodies and also um we'll talk about it or uh, the, the 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 submission of the results as well so um part of our functions in 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 in, in x-ray licensing is to um, assess uh, 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 applications of people intending to use X-ray equipment, whether it be for diagnostic imaging or for dental Im uh, imaging. And then uh, that licensing process, um, one of the big thing that we always ensure is that uh, we cannot license a machine to somebody that doesn't um, comply with the, 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 the condition of taking um of 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 uh, uh having quality control tests done frequently so so meaning your your activity plays a very important role even in the future of a license holder so license holders they will be stuck without any they can't add new um they can't add new uh units in their in, the, in their license if they are not compliant with their current um uh, uh, license units. So, so now once that is done, everything now we're trying to 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 facilitate um, our our processes electronically. Meaning, um, the applications comes electronically. We response, we send a response to the various participant on the application, and also once these tests are available, we want them to um, to be sent to us. Um, uh, when when we want the test to be sent to us uh, electronically when the test has been performed and um, uh, the test as they come the way we, we it is set up in the electronic submission it's uh, the way we are able to easily uh, update the the database directly from from the sheets that we we receive from you guys so that uh, the uh, the, the test can ref the, the test can reflect immediately. So we also have um, instances where our inspectors, when they do their routine inspection, um, they, they they normally, if they find other cross uh, 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 um, non-compliances, they will seal the machine. Uh, they have their own assessment and criteria how how they did they do that so once the machine is sealed um usually is the inspection bodies that can assist us with the unsealing of the machine meaning once the person is now fixed whatever they needed to fix and then they want the machine to be uh in in in, in use so we will normally ask the machine to be um 
uh, perform the quality control test. And then once that is done, for that to be done, it's the inspection bodies or the inspect the inspector from inspection bodies will talk to us to say um, whatever that was missing is now in place. The machine um, is sort of ready to to be tested and 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 so that it can be uh, used again. So again, that ceiling of a machine. Um, we 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 do sell ourselves, but uh, and at most times the unselling, um, we we rely on the inspection bodies if the machine needs to be tested before uh, being used. So we we encourage that uh, because for every machine that is sold, they, there will be a a seal letter, and the seal letter will usually indicate um, who is the inspector that sold the machine. And uh, it also, sometimes there will be a report that uh, indicates why the machine was sealed. So the inspect it's the inspection bodies needs to evaluate all of those things um, 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 as 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 uh, when you are requested by the license holder to come and assist. So you need to be sure why the machine is sealed and there are reasons that. Uh, if they think they have the mitigations already uh, uh, in place, you, 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 we, I mean, it will assist you because we normally get uh, the request from the inspector to unseal, but uh, we haven't had any communication from the license holder. So we also encourage that um, um, the inspection board is, uh, uh, to, uh, to a certain extent, um, they, 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 they play an important role between us and the, and the license holders, but we also encourage that license holders, they must come to us, uh, especially if we picked up something and because it reflects back to their, to their, to their records that um, uh, they are not very non, uh, compliant fr friendly with our regulation. So no matter what the situation is, uh, inspection bodies can can communicate with us, uh, but to uh, to some other issues, we prefer that the license holder is the one that uh, uh, communicate with us. So sometimes there are gray areas there of of who supposed to do what when, but if there's an issue about unsealing and uh, 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 going forward, we are happy to 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 communicate through the inspection bodies. All right, so when once once the process from uh, SANAS has been completed, inspection bodies, they come to us for the license to, to, to perform the tests, um, uh, which we issue uh, in terms of Section 41B of uh, the Hazardous Substance Act. Um, and then and then that license will come with certain conditions. So for, for the sake of this presentation, I just picked a few. I, I didn't want to go through all of them. I picked a few and I picked them based on uh, our observation as we work with the inspection bodies. Some of the things maybe they they are forgotten or they over they are overlooked or they are overemphasized or whatever the case might be. But I think it's it, it's 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 appropriate for us to re remind each other of what the license condition says. Um, whenever there's an acceptance test or a routine uh, QC test, this must be doc documented and um, the, a copy of your results must be handed over to the license holder. So the license holder is required to keep what we call the IER. And then um, so our inspectors, that's the first document that they, they look at. So usually if there's an incident of overexposure, or for whatever reason, this is the first uh, um, record that you want to look at, including their, their routine daily QC or weekly QC, but we want to see what was tested by the inspection board. So this is very important. Um, again, we, we come across a thing where uh, when there's a new um, responsible persons in, in, in practices, they cannot find any information, but we can see that test was done, but they say they don't have a file, they can't find the file. 
uh, uh, way this is kept and, and everything like this. So one of the things that we encourage is that um, practices need to make sure that licenses are displayed uh, so that um, any, any new person that comes can easily find what, what needs to be found uh, pertaining the regulations. Um, another condition that you will find on the inspection body license um, is that uh, if there is any non-conformance uh, of uh, the test that is performed, the license holder must be informed and corrective maintenance should immediately be implemented and then followed by retesting. Unfortunately, we received a lot of tests that have failed. So, and we can only see that after we've uploaded in the in the database because we don't we don't assess the test on the on the what you call on the spreadsheet as we receive them. We have to upload them first for us to be able to see um, what has failed or what has happened or if these all the tests were performed or whatever the case may be. So in 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 the past, probably there was. Uh, uh, relation control didn't have enough resources to go through each and every test that is uploaded, and and that has changed uh, a bit, um, um, including uh, our chairperson of the of today, who's a medical physicist by profession, is part of the team now, and he really does look at this test uh, since November last year, so he goes through each and every test that has been. Um, submitted and then the problem sometimes if the test has failed maybe it's, it doesn't have an impact if there's a comment we are we are able to work around it but um it really disturbed the 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 the, the, the process if the test has failed and we don't get any information of then what is happening we will prefer that you don't even send if the tests have failed until the corrective uh, measures have been put in place and then you retest and then you send us the correct things. So in the past, you would get away with it because once the test reflects, even if there's a failed test, but when uh, an admin is trying to print a license and check compliance, they might not see that there's a test failed because uh, the system is built in, in the effect in the way that once something is submitted, it takes it as um, uh, it's available. Uh, but then somebody needs to check the test. Uh, 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 while, um, what are they? So now we have a process that each and every uh, a test that is submitted is is being checked. So the things that we check fail tests, we check that all the tests as indicated on the diagnostic and dental QC documents are, are performed um, accordingly. So sometimes um, you find that uh, there are things that are no longer relevant on those tests. Um, so we, 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 without your comment, we, 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 we run around a little bit before we can come to, to, to the confusion. So it will always help as well when the probably, let's say, there's a test of a viewing box and the viewing box is no longer relevant, but you can see that um, uh, 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 on the previous test it was ticked, on the new test it's no longer there, there's no comment. So we, we pick that as um, incomplete testing. So uh, at, at some point you will see a lot of tests, uh, a lot of tests being requested to be repeated because if it's not clear um, why the test is being omitted, then we have to ask the question. So I will move to another condition um, that we have on, 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 on the inspection body license is that um, inspection bodies are expected to submit on a monthly basis all QC and repair tests, um, which were performed during the, that month. Acceptance test must be immediately be submitted after completion. So the document, um, that's the email address where they are being sent, and then we take it from them. So you, you everyone, you already know how this process works, and um, uh, probably this is one area that we need to work together to um, to improve because it has a huge impact uh, on the licensing process. Should somebody be waiting for? Um, the test while the uh, 
trying to get a new machine, but they are waiting for the test. So at the moment, uh, the team is sending um, uh, 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 the, 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 the therapies uh, and, or the ES sheets every month, and then uh, we receive and then we update. Um, that that is fine. It's in line with this condition, um, but this condition also says acceptance test must be immediately submitted. So the the issue that I've picked up that I've discussed with some of the the, the colleagues in, in in here is that you can do the acceptance acceptance test of a new machine, whereas the the machine was added a, a day before or a, sorry a day after the the new sheets was was sent so you are not able to submit it immediately so um we 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 we, we are stuck in that now that the condition says you must submit immediately but you are unable to submit because that machine doesn't appear on the sheets that you have we we we, we are working on the solution around this issue uh, one of the solution we tried to implement last year was to get the ES twice weekly, and uh, we realized is it's it's not really working nicely for us. Um, so 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 we have another alternative, um, um, which we will communicate as soon as we polish the process uh, uh, in future. But but we are, are we are aware that this is causing a lot of. Um, uh, delays in terms of issuing the license. Again, before we wouldn't accept uh, it, that your your reports or your tests in any other way except this process. Again, I would assume that that was the resource issue. I have on few occasion accepted the reports when I look at the situation and 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 the explanation. Then I will I will then accept the reports uh, so that we can. Uh, be able to finalize the licensing part, but obviously, as a regulator, you need to be consistent in how you you treat everyone, and um, uh, uh, you need to be consistent in how you apply things. So, um, another condition that we have um, is that your accreditation status must be always um, up to date with SANAS. Uh, I think SANAS have a renewal or, or, or yeah, I think they have a renewal or uh, a certain time you need to uh, renew your accreditation and stuff like that. So um, at the moment, we didn't put any condition that um, once you get the renewal from SANAS, how you usually we get the, the notification. But I think we will put it on the condition as time goes on that we need to be notified as after all the um, after all the the, the 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 renewals, because on our license we don't have a a limit, uh, uh, but we just need to know that your your ins your inspection um, accreditation status is still valid, right? Um, as I mentioned, that uh, 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 we we haven't been accepting any hard copies uh, uh, in the process of submitting uh, test results, um, and then we we only suggest that there's those there's the the, the detailed report of the test must be submit must be uh, uh, given to the license holder. Uh, as I mentioned before, they keep it in their in their equipment, um, individual equipment records. So um, we then do get uh, some complaints about our system, but usually we've now uh, seen that. I mean, sometimes things happen. You find that the the Excel sheet we sent you might not uh, do what it's supposed to do. Or on our side, um, when we try to upload, sometimes you get errors from how you uploaded the results. So these things needs to be communicated through the email address um, uh, that I sh I showed before. And usually, they are, if they are communicated clearly, we are able to resolve uh, uh, some of the issues. And it it could be the issue from that side 
from your side or from our side, but whatever it is, if we work together, we are able to um, uh, to resolve um, these uh, 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 issues. So, and then the process once, as I mentioned, the process is sort of automated. Uh, we don't uh, 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 look at the test uh, from the, the sheets. We only look at the test once they are uh, uh, in each and every machine that is uh, yeah, being tested. So because of that, uh, we are unable to alter to alter any anything from your test. So we cannot change what you what you've put on on your test. Um, um, so 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 if there's anything wrong, it will only it's either we'll get an error when we're trying to upload or we'll only see it once the results have been uploaded. And after the results have been uploaded, we have no way to to alter that information. And then if we don't like what you see, then we'll request the inspection bodies that the, they must re redo the test afterwards. So just be rest assured that uh, once you once you once the tests are in the system, um, there's no any other manual capture or any other manual manipulation that can be done. Um, the one thing that I, I maybe on the diagnostic uh, side mostly, we normally give uh, licenses to them, uh, to the license holders. We normally give a license. Uh, they send the application without uh, without a serial number. So um, in the past, then we will have to uh, rely on inspection bodies to um, to leave the comments or to leave the to indicate the serial number of the machine they've tested, uh, so that we can update the system as we receive. Unfortunately, that process is manual. We just we just see what the serial number is, and then we go back to where we list the machine, and then we we enter it manually on the other side, not on your test, but your your you putting the serial number there. Uh, it always helps us to um, to update our database, um, and then also, I mean, if you pick up uh, machines that doesn't have serial numbers, but they're supposed to. Uh, it assists us if you guys give that information to 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 identify the machine. A machine that does not have a serial number becomes a problem when uh, they want to exchange hands, and we cannot figure out where the machine is. Uh, it becomes a problem. Then, yeah, there's a long process to get around it. Um, so it does help to those who are, are giving us the update of the. Um, the update of the serial numbers. So what 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 also happens is in in the license of the in the license of uh, uh, the license holder, we we at some point updated the fact that um, I mean if you get the new print out, you should be able to see the last the last QC dates, and uh, this assist also the inspection bodies to see which machines uh, or even the license holder because the license belong to the license holder, it assists them to see where, which machines are compliant and which machines are non-compliant. So this document is printed always after every application. Once the application is successful, we normally print this document for the um for the for the for the for the license holder to uh to have and to keep. So um, this will always, I mean, if you know the machine, the frequency of the machine, you can quickly tell that this machine is due when uh, 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 for, for, for the next QC and uh, you, are, you are able to, to, to plan around it. Um, so, so again, this allow, this, this, this date is not in, uh, in a manual input. This date is taken from the previous results, uh, uh, the previous results of the what you call the previous results of um, the inspection body that was sent. 
So it's it's automatically taken from there. So it's not something that we do uh, manually. OK, so. Uh, in terms of the the tests themselves, uh, we license um, machines with what we what we say is um, these are electronical machines that are generating ionizing radiation. Uh, the regulation is, is is clear that this is what we are licensing, but we have an imaging chain. Um, the imaging chain includes um, imaging plane uh, plates processing and then it, it, the actual image printing device or viewing and displaying devices. So now we add all of this uh, as components apart from the X-ray generator. Everything else is, is, is a component, but this component is crucial because if you don't have the correct viewing and displaying, you can still misdiagnose patients. Um, if you don't have the proper processing, uh, a lot of things can go wrong. So detectors, very important. So what we're saying is that um, since we now I I include this as components and they are also included in the, the, uh, in the QC documents where they need to be tested, so we often find the effect that um, uh, uh, inspection bodies, they will randomly, uh, if, if it's an acceptance test of a machine, but we don't see the generator, we only see the, 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 um, the CR or the TDR, but we don't see the, the, the generator, but it's an acceptance test. So we always wonder why is the, why is the what you call the imaging chain tested at the same time? So we we will often now return this test to say uh, the test must be a complete uh, imaging chain where applicable. So not not it is, it obviously we check which systems have been tested and then we know how these systems are connected. So the right systems needs to be tested in the correct way. So. Um, it is very important to, to to sometimes we get where a generator only is being um, is being tested, whereas our our license we 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 approved a license to have a generator with its components. So just take note of that that um, we prefer to see the imaging chain in one set of results, and it makes our lives very easy to to know that the tests are compliant because once we upload the test uh, that is showing only sections of the, or the, the system is, is, is unless we open the test, the system cannot tell us that uh, the tests are missing. It will, t it will tell us that the person is now compliant uh, unless we go directly to, to the test to, to look in what you've, what you've submitted. So now that we are doing that, we are picking that a lot that um, Test tests are being done half half. All right, so on our database, or and also in your license uh, from uh, uh, from us and also from Sanas, you will find um, that inspection inspection bodies they have various uh, 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 scopes. So usually, um, um, most inspection bodies they 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 they, uh, they have experience on certain part of the process, so they will apply for those scopes and they will be accredited accordingly from Sanas, and also we will recognize the scopes accordingly. So there are um, uh, uh, various scopes. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you can see um, from medical uh, diagnostic some of the scopes and then for also from dental uh, uh, side. So this will be clearly visible shown on your on your license and it also be reflected on your on your accreditation from Sanas. Just the summary of some of the test guideline that you'll find on the QC documents for virus machine. Uh, I, 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 uh, I forgot to put the summary for from the dental side, but I hope colleagues already know that. Um, so we 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 do get 
now and again um, uh, uh, queries about these tests as they are, and um, we have already made some of those notes down uh, for the for the for the for the STC because we felt that is not something that we can uh, change on our on, on our own, but. As it stands, these are the these are this is the summary of the some of the tests that are performed for different uh, for different units. So I wanted to share some of the stats. Um, the stats might be uh, changed as we are very busy. Uh, they might have changed from what it is uh, from this page. So if you know these numbers, uh, don't be surprised uh, if you still see them. I, I, I we didn't update. To, to the current, current, current. This could be a, a bit behind. Um, but roughly, uh, medical X-ray units are, are around uh, 5,000 to 6,000. And then um, we have picked up machines that have never been tested. So the the, the, the system is, allow, uh, is able to get us this, 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 this stats our data, from our database. And then uh, for dental, it's uh, over 10,000 now um, uh, of units. Uh, I think for the dental, is, is, is we have um, a huge gap uh, of tests. And um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, machines that have never been tested for various reasons that I've picked up since I've joined in, 20, in 2021. But um, um, we 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 are in a process to correct some of some of these things uh, with the assistance of the the, the, the dental community uh, as well, so that they they should also be aware that um, um, th this is a regulation and this is enforceable. Uh, what we currently see is. Whenever they, there's a need for them to upgrade or to um, to add units, um, then they go for their compliance. Um, but we want them to be compliant nonetheless. Um, but the numbers are too high at the moment, uh, so our inspectors are unable to reach all of them. And yeah, so. Um, so most 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 medical X-ray uh, 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 units they 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 are uh, they, they are uh, compliant and the, the compliant rate is is higher than the the ones at at at, at dental. Okay, so in um, uh, uh, last year I shared with the colleagues. Uh, the colleagues might know uh, the, there's there's two colleagues that we have here, Melanie and Ntokozo. They assisted me with uh, uploading your information on the website. That will be the link. So usually we do get inquiries from uh, the license holders. Uh, uh, so in the past, we'll forward them the PDF document for them to see the inspection bodies. So we, 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 we made it available on the website. We still gonna improve on it, and um, at the moment we don't have a, a set time to to update. I think it's now due for for an update. Um, um, but yeah, uh, this information is important for you. Also, you guys, every time when I update, you you'll probably get a notification from me. It's important that you check yourself that um, your information is not changed. It's not. And it's also up to date, and that information is it's it's actually what we have in our database. So there's no way we're gonna update that information without updating the database. Um, at the moment, in terms of a clear guideline on on how uh, an, an inspection body can be registered uh, from our side, we we rely on the. The, the SANA's accreditation information. So when somebody inquires and say they want to be an inspection body, we just refer them to SANA's to start the process on that side, and then they notify us on this side. But there should be a guiding document of that process. And 
that is what we, 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 we will be working on come in the next few months to have a guide a guiding document of how do you obtain a, a an, an inspection body license from SAPRA. So that will that will come in the near future. And then also obviously as I mentioned, if we put any guideline on the website, we will ask for your opinion and for 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 your inputs. So apart from updating those two guidelines, this will be another document that we, we will try to develop for 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 the ease of um the process and also to include how uh, you change scopes you add scopes all of those things uh, it needs to be it needs to be outlined in 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 a sort of document that is available uh, uh, on the website so with that i'd like to thank everyone for giving me the ear and their time and i'll give it back to our our chairperson and then we can go to the next hour of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mapope, for your uh, presentation. Uh, please note also the website, it, it has been posted um, on the, uh, the chats. You can also um, put your questions also on the chat as well. Um, and then on, on that note, um, I will open the session for questions and then um, just raise your hand uh, when you want to have a question so that I can be able to see and, and follow the, the, the numbers. Uh, thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, the, we can start with the discussion. Hello, Kevin, you can go ahead. Uh, so you can assist. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize I had. I'm going to see. Yeah, everybody's mics has have been un, um, unmuted. So, okay. well, not unmuted. They can unmute themselves. So I see okay. all of you can speak now. Okay, oh, thank you. Thank right. you, sir. So, um, can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes, Kevin. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Mfope, for the uh, for the presentation. Um, I I agree with the fact that the inspection bodies and Supra and Sanas need to work as a team, um, and I don't think this is a a platform where we start throwing um, accusations. And uh, I think we need to work as a team, and I think we do have. Uh, the regulations are great regulations. I really feel that um, as long as they're enforced, um, the regulations will help um, very much to keep the um, the equipment and the doctors and the patients safe. Unfortunately, what we are finding is that um, although the regulations are there, the enforcement's not there. And if the enforcement's not there, then like we have with our roads, we have wonderful road regulations, but without enforcement, we end up with disasters. So um, my question is with, and I understand there are, like we all have um, a lack of resources in terms of uh, inspectors, which is why we are working as a team. But um, when, when, uh, we find machines unlicensed, uh, no CE markings, no no regulations are followed whatsoever. Um, there's, there doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, enforcement or um, crackdown on 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 those, and I don't know how they get into the into the country because that should be stopped before they are even imported, and yet we get. Um, a lot of machines that are not even licensed for him. So my question would be, how do we stop that? That's number one. And number two is, um, I think it's uh, of the dental companies. And um, uh, on this meeting today, we've got uh, our regulations authority people from Dubai and also Johannesburg with um, 
with Francesca and Manisha in, in Dubai, just also trying to understand how the regulations work. But we, off, we, we feel that the, the largest companies are almost easy pickings. And, um, and so we get, we get uh, um, singled out maybe uh, because probably we do the most um, installations, but we do feel that it's almost uh, that we get negatively um, or maybe punished even um, because we're doing the, the most of these installations and yet the smaller companies are able to just install and, and, and do what they want. And um, I think that that for us is a is a is a problem. Um, I think that let me just stop there and, and see what the this what um, the answers are to that. Uh, thank you, Kevin. OK, uh, thanks, um, Mr. Kevin. I, I like the, the fact that you you are encouraging the, the, the non finger pointing <laughs> principle which I like very much. Um, yeah, the issue with the um, illegal imports, it's also a thorny issue on our side. Um, on the 8th of February, I, 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 we, we published a letter addressing this issue. Uh, so if you go to the website, um, uh, the SAPRA website, news, uh, new communication to industry under news. You'll see there is a letter, just to add, to just to uh, bring to the attention uh, of the public, and but we shared this letter with the practitioners in because obviously they are the ones who are buying these machines. Um, so just to to alert them that um, uh, the, especially dental equipment because. The, the letter is specifically for dental equipment because they are the ones who are buying those things. So most of them, they do come, um, uh, uh, they do contact us and say, is this company is trying to buy, uh, they're trying to, to buy from, is it registered? So we, we do assist in that. And then some of them, they will say, I already have the equipment, uh, uh, but I want to license it. Then we advise them to return the equipment. Uh, so now you raise the issue of enforcement, which is uh, a very, uh, uh, we, we have now started a policy of enforcement, which is in a very, very infancy stage. Uh, we will have a, because part of enforcement is, our regulation allows us to confiscate the uh, uh, illegal machines. It allows us to, to take them, uh, and put them in some storage, whatever the case might be. But at the, at the moment, we, we, we don't have that um, uh, uh, plan uh, within SAPRA, and we are busy doing the, 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 the policy, and then also with the assistance of the management, so, so that if there is a need for us to confiscate or, or to possess things, we need to know where to restore them and things like that. And then obviously uh, prosecution is another uh, thing that comes into play. Um, in terms of port, um, at the moment, because you, as you know, SAPRA regulates uh, all medical uh, related issues. So we, SAPRA as a whole, have put people in the ports now for, 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 ver for various uh, other activities. So we we have proposed to add uh, people who will be knowledgeable with things that has to do with uh, radiation, because uh, radiation devices specifically, because we've noted um, that at the ports, if the things are disguised, they are not uh, they are not being picked. Uh, some of them they are they are being picked, then they will send us a list, and then we'll decide. We'll then. Um, indicate which one is legit, which one is not legit. Um, the issue of small companies versus big companies, uh, it's this is the second time it's coming to my ears. And um, the, the, regu the regulation 
applies across the board. So we don't have a a favorite and a, a an enemy or anything. It it should apply equally to everyone. Similarly to um, public versus private, we 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 want to implement regulations uh, equally. Whether you are in private or in public, you are a small company, you are a big company. We want to treat everybody uh, uh, equal. Um, but as I'm saying, um, this is the second time this issue comes to my attention that small companies are sort of um, getting away with it. Um, another thing that I could suggest, we have a, 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 a whistleblower tab. Um, I think I have received two or three that uh, came through the whistleblower. We were able to 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 um, to send inspectors to to investigate those matters. Um, uh, since I since since we've we've uh, communicated the whistleblower platform, because then we won't know uh, who uh, it's, it's it's completely anonymous. But that whistleblower platform only works if we get specific description, uh, building or whatever the case might be. Then we are able to to follow up on those things, because. Um, I mean, it 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 renders the regulation uh, weak if things can get to the country without the proper uh, 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 approvals. I'm not sure if I've I've covered all your questions, Mr. Kevin. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I think, as you say, I mean, it's in an infancy stage. Um, as you know, we, we really would like to see as that grows that there is some sort of enforcement for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, the rest, I think, let's carry on, see what people say. Uh, you mentioned that you have people from Dubai. I don't know uh, 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 what capacity are they in. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't. I, I just heard that you said there are people so, from Dubai. Uh, so um, being a global company, we um, we do have a regulations um, uh, pillar and um, I'll ask Manisha just to to maybe come in and uh, just say who she is and um, and Francisca from the regulations side. Hello. Um, this is Manisha from Densply Serona. Um, so I'm based in Dubai and effective January, I'll be supporting the African region with the regulatory requirements. Um, we have a separate regulatory pillar and separate quality pillar. So my colleague in South Africa, Francisca, is uh, um, was handling the regulatory part as well. So I've been under training with her and yeah it's my first time to attend the meeting so it's been very informative thank you all right thank you colleagues um thank you thank you mr mapope uh Ruan has questions uh, i mean he's got four questions on the chat i'll just read them out so question number one it's uh, how do we update the x-ray license document to add or remove signatories or inspectors and okay, then the, uh, can, okay. I, can I answer one by one because okay. uh, my head will start spinning if I uh, saved all of them. Okay. Um, the, as I mentioned, at the moment we don't have a guidance document, so obviously your question is uh, actually relevant because if we had the guidance document, it, it would, this will be included. Um, at the moment we do it by notification, so obviously, um, to have a signatory, you would have had a different um, uh, accreditation. Uh, your, your, your accreditation will be updated from Sanasi's side. And uh, once that happened, or if you're adding a new inspector, that inspector needs to be assessed and all of that, and then get the, the sign off, then you submit. So you at the moment, there's, there's people that just sent it to me which I'm happy to assist. And Alalazola is already assisting me with that as well. So uh, we, we can keep we can keep the same process for now. 
until we have the gui guidance document to, to say this is the steps to follow, this is where you submit it to. And again, other people, they need to be trained for to handle this, the, the, the process as well. But at the moment, uh, once you have everything from SANAS, I'm happy to uh, for 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 the for the colleagues to send it to, to me, uh, or or to Lazola. I mean, uh, next one. Thank you, sir. The second question: If a unit is found using an incorrect serial number, as listed on the ES document, how do we correct the serial number? This is best to uh, um, this uh, is is best that we co you communicate directly to the unit. Um, uh, 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 that that's that's what you found, and then then we can advise from there. Because I think it does happen now and again that um, uh, an incorrect serial number is found, but we need to first do some few investigations. Uh, because sometimes uh, you find that we already have the history of that machine or in anything like that. So it's best to communicate with um, the, the, the colleagues and, and that ES, um, that ES, uh, where, uh, what you call the ES um, email address is the best one to use. Um, I think one of the colleagues you can assist by putting, uh, Natalie, you can assist by putting that email address on the chats as well. But I'm sure colleagues, they already know that email address. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mapope. Uh, question number three, if we're testing the complete imaging chain, do we stop at the display monitor as used by the radiographer? OK, the display monitor that we are interested in is the, is the reporting monitor. Uh, so you'll see on the um, and uh, what you call it um, on the QC document, uh, the display monitor of interest is 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 the um, the one that is used by the radiologist for 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 reporting. So meaning uh, uh, sometimes you you might not see it in the department. So now it means it's it's in another room if there's network connection, whatever the case might be. So that that is the one that we we want tested. We we're not really fussy about the one for radiographers, but I know now the manufacturers, they are selling the same quality of um, the same quality of monitors to 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 the departments. Uh, so it seems as if even those display monitors at the consoles are need to be tested, but we're really interested in the reporting uh, monitors. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the last question, if we are implementing a system where the complete imaging chain must be completed, will there be a document stating this that we can supply to the license holder? Um, I think we can do another, we can do it in a form of communication because this is this is this is uh is already is already an expectation uh, from from uh, from all the the regulation and all the the QC documents, but if if there is an emphasis, then we can do a, a a a communication. We can write a communication letter, publish it on the website, and share it with uh, the industry as well. Okay, yeah. I think that that usually suffices as a, a a requirement, or also maybe also put it in 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 one of the conditions either on the license holder or update condition 95 pro, uh, possible. OK. All right, thank you, Mr. Mapope. Then there's another question from Mrs. Uh, G. Swart. Um, inspection bodies are required to test the full image change. However, at request for this inspect, this inspection body does not have any information of the sensor as it is not listed in on ES or IB document or on the acceptance test letter. And many times unlicensed sensors are found. How will we address this? Um, OK. Um, the first the first part of the I think this question is in two parts. Um, mm -hmm. uh, OK, with with the with the issue of the sensors at the moment, the, 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 I think the biggest problem was that 
um, the license holders, they buy the sensors from different suppliers and then one arrives before the other or we get the application. Preferable, this is the advice that should go to, 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 to the license holders is that they must, they must um, get, give us the applications almost at the same time, even if it comes from different suppliers that assist us because once we, once we issue the license, um, 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 to install the, the unit and the sensor comes at a later stage, um, uh, it becomes a problem for everyone, uh, uh, for, for the inspection bodies. And, and for, so it, it's, it's as if now the, uh, the, the application for the sensor needs to jump the queue uh, uh, for it to be approved so that the inspection bodies can do the, the, the imaging chain. And then at the same time, if we have give, issued the license for more than 30 days and the tests haven't been coming because uh, there's, we are waiting for the sensor and the sensor now, it, the system then gets confused <laughs> because it will tell you that you're now not compliant. We gave you a machine a month ago and then the, the, the test hasn't been submitted, but you guys, you already know that you want the sensor. So that the best thing is to, is to do this process, uh, um, what you call it, uh, concurrently, the application of the, even if it's from different supplies, but do the application at the same time. And then we then give you the license to install both the machine and the component. Then that assists you uh, to be able to plan your, 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 to plan your, uh, to plan your inspection. But we have on few occasion, very few occasion accepted to, 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 get what we, we, we've we discussed actually with the more to the dental side uh, previously that we, 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 we did a few times a letter to comply, meaning once we see that the machines uh, tests are, are delayed, uh, but there's an application for something else, then we say with the, the license holder, with the, with the help of the inspection body, they can sign, a, a letter to comply, and then 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 we can issue, we can add the new equipment and the license, and then the process can can carry on. Uh, it 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 has been very difficult to manage that um, um, that process. Uh, if it's one once twice in a month, it, it it's it's better. But if it happens frequently, then it becomes a a challenge. So we, yeah, those are the, some some of the uh, uh, few solutions we try to put in place. When it comes to um, unlicensed sensors, this this will be part of the enforcement. Uh, I think we we can we can put it in because us as the regulator, we are able to to confiscate, but uh, our inspectorate can indicate if we can give the inspection bodies. The powers to confiscate those, um, uh, 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 what you call it, uh, those sensors. Because at the moment, the worst part with the sensor, as much as it's part of the imaging um, chain, uh, it becomes a bit tricky for us because they are not emitting radiation, so they are easily transported. So they are not, they are not picked up at ports as a medical device as well because they they are just sensors. So if they are not picked as medical devices, then it's easy for them to to uh, to pass through. Um, yeah. So um, we can go to the next question. Uh, I yes, think I see. if okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I think if there are colleagues on my side who wants to clarify things, uh, please yeah. feel free uh, to 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 come in, um, colleagues from inspectorate and from licensing uh, because you know I don't know all the <laughs> I don't have all the answers on my side yes sir all right okay yes sir. um we'll take a question from Mrs G Swart you can go ahead ma'am good day everybody and um, I may not mention you all by name but thank you uh, Safra for arranging this long overdue meeting 
and um, I like your comments that we all should work as a team and we're really looking forward to that. Um, just uh, to further on my comment about sensors, this is becoming a huge problem and um, if we can discuss it at an opportune time for everybody because we have every day we are seeing illicit sensors in the country never been licensed um, and you may think it's one or two but unfortunately it's becoming a huge problem because it is impacting on the image chain so as much as it's not a radiation emitting device I can bring it through customs in my pocket that nobody will ever know it does have a huge impact on the industry where for the sales part and for the end user so my suggestion today is I don't want to hold everybody up in this meeting but can we please arrange a meeting where we sit down and map out how we are going to take this forward thank you so much thank you thank you uh... Uh, Mrs. Swart, I like solutions than problems. We can definitely, um, I mean, uh, we can definitely have a, a separate engagement specifically to deal with that. Uh, my colleagues from Inspectorate, they are here also, and they can start thinking about solutions um, uh, around that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Thank you, sir. So I look forward to prior engagement, the form, further engagement with Further you. engagement, so yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's another question from uh, Pierre. With regards to the electronic submissions in various situations, for example, acceptance tests for used equipment or any agent submissions, is there a way for faster capturing as outstanding submissions will block new license applications, etc.? Um, thanks, Mr. Chair and Pierre for the question. Um, yeah, this is this is what I was saying that um, last last year at some point we attempted to um, to try to do a two weekly uh, 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 because the the challenge is that if we add a machine today, but the this ES has left to yesterday, then it means if you do the acceptance tests in the same week, it will take another three weeks or four weeks for that machine to be um, to be updated on, on, on the system. That has been our challenge. So um, I am aware of this challenge and we are trying to find solutions. Uh, so, so one of the solution last year was that we, we, we actually give the ES on a two weekly basis. Um, I'm 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 exploring uh, because I did say that we have something that is in, in, in mind but is not yet implemented. But I'm exploring a, a situation where uh, we can have in like an empty, like a dummy empty uh, spreadsheet that you guys can use to to submit only for acceptance test. But we we're still trying to uh, configure that with. Uh, we'll have to configure that with IT. I mean. So that at least acceptance test can be submitted promptly um, 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 as as you guys finish them. So you don't have to wait for the ES, but you'll you'll have like a dummy uh, a template. But but we, we we don't have that as yet. But it's it's one of the options. Uh, 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 and yeah, it does it does block the license, and it was worse when the licenses were already taking six weeks before they they get out it means now it will take three months for for the, the machine to be used so yeah we we it's not yet say and once there's a proper solution it will be communicated to to everyone all right thank you sir i think natalie uh, would like to add something as well uh yes um, uh, uh, thank you uh Good morning. It's still morning. Yes. Good morning, everybody. There's quite a few hands in front of me, but yes, you are yes. correct. I wanted to add um, to the point that uh, Mr. Mapope was making, and and maybe just clarify that it's not just a matter of uploading the results. It's actually a process. They do not reflect on the database immediately after you have sent me that email. Um, in, in addition to the uh, preparation of the data for the database, there's also a verification process that is part of that. 
So once you get your email from me, uh, you can rest assured that it's gone through that entire process and that it's actually ready for processing in our other steps. I would also like to encourage um, mostly the medical uh, uh, inspection bodies in, in a case where you get a request from a license holder that you must perform an ad hoc test because they suddenly got a may not install, please communicate the license number to me so that I can at least forward it on to the section that does the processing because I get the results in one package mixed with acceptance and QC. So it would be very helpful to just flag that result so that we know it's actually holding up the process. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Graham, we can go ahead with your question. Hardy, sorry, can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, with result, uh, with regards to these uh, uh, to the sensors, I did pose a question there. Is um, we 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 have no baseline data at the moment uh, for these sensors at all. We go out there for, uh, and there's many of them. Even the companies that are are licensed on uh, uh, who have licenses for these uh, for these sensors are not are not having the inspections done. And that's the same, obviously, the same issue with um, uh, with the X-ray machines as well. Uh, the same sort of thing. Oh, thank you, thank right. you, Graham. Thanks. Thank you so much. You can uh, you can mute yourself, Graham. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I must say that uh, uh, you 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 are one of the people who who sends these things to us uh, more often than. Uh, anybody else because you 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 are mostly seeing these things in in practice um the issue of the sensors is very difficult uh, uh to deal with uh, so i think uh, as 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 uh, mrs swart indicated we need to have a a, a proper uh, sit down um with the machines at the moment uh, that's why uh, I mentioned before that we, we issued the letter. Uh, that letter we sent it through the various uh, association that has to deal with uh, um, the dental uh, uh, industry and also to the HPCSA. I think HPCSA, they will upload it in their website as well because we want to capture the... Um, <laughs> say it kept capture the the the, the practitioners uh, rather than the suppliers because uh the, the practitioners are the ones that are affected if if they are if, i mean it's their business so we want to capture the practitioners uh, uh, uh before we then start with the enforcement so if the practice practitioners are aware of what needs to happen in a in a bigger scale then they will not be buying those equipments so um, that 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 has been our approach uh, at this stage, that we capture the the the, the practitioners, we we let them know what is required, what 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 processes to be followed. So as I'm saying, it, it's still also in the beginning. Uh, that letter was just the first communication, and then we we are looking forward to have more. I mean, also. The medical aid already approached us uh, uh, now that they want us to to give them access or to give them some sort of a, a database where they can look out out of of when they are uh, processing payments, where they can look out those uh, practitioners and and the machines they are using. So um, we plan to have the engagement with the the medical aid as well. Uh, the medical aid uh, companies um, forgot their association now. So once we have them now, once they are aware that machines that and because now it becomes an issue um, on their side as well, they 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 need to know that they are paying people who are compliant. So in that way, once we have the medical aid and the practitioners on, on board, 
So we, we will then be left with um, the actual companies roaming around with those machines, and that matter can be easily dealt with uh, with the help of uh, SAPS as well. So we have cracked down one of the largest garage suppliers uh, 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 sometime last year. Um, yeah. I think I'll end there, Mr. Krem. We will take up this conversation in the in the in the in the, uh, uh, in the suggested meeting by um, Mrs. Swart, and then we can take it further with our inspectorate as well. Thank you, sir. Um, there's a question from uh, Gail. Uh, you can go ahead, ma'am. Check if Mrs. Swart wants a follow-up question because I see she's number one on the list. Hello, thank You're you. Um, just just a little bit, slanting a little hello. bit. Hello, hello, hello. Is Gail going to go before hello. me? Hello. Gail, you go. Hello. Oh, okay. okay. Gail, you can go ahead then uh, followed by Mrs. Swart. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello, Gail. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, goodness me. Hello. Hello. Uh, you can unmute. Yes. Hello. We can hear you. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear you, Gail. Okay. Hello. Okay, it, it means she can't hear, hear us. Hello. There's, there's hear a problem me? with the speaker on her side. Um, Tawazo, can you assist with the, with the chat to ask the person to do um, a chat, maybe? Uh, let me check for you, Nkadisi. Hmm? Is this Gail? Yes, yes. yes. But I think oh, it's see they're talking now. We can't hear. So put your take. yeah. It's it's you, there. Um, is there sound on their side? They can't hear us. Natalie has already asked her to place the question. No, no, we can't chat. hear anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe we can mute her for now so that we can um, hear okay. Mrs. Swart. Go back to your eyes. Hello, everybody. Um, Mr. McCondisi, in your um PowerPoint presentation to us. I didn't see uh, anything about the uh, installers who have no qualification. Call mm -hmm. your normal guy who puts a machine oh, in, so and we find uh, this. Go, go, go. The, oui, oui, oui. Put your Hello. Down. We find in the industry, both in diagnostic and dental, that Joe Soap and his brother install units. Now inspection bodies have to be registered with SANAS. Companies have to be registered under all their requirements to be installers. But what is happening with these Johnny come lately companies? They install machines and often this is where we find our most problems. Machines not being set properly, machines coming off walls. Is there any space in the regulation that you can look at these type of installers because they have a free reign out there. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks, Mrs. Swart. This is a very good question. Uh, all, all questions are good, but uh, this is a very good question. Um, uh, so, okay, when it's a new machine, um, when it's a new machine, the obviously we get the application from the supplier. Uh, the supplier, we are. I mean, the assumption is that the supplier is going to do the installation. Obviously, with, with the supplier being um, uh, licensed to supply the machine, it means they have the process to 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 do the installation. And then, what then we on the form they need to indicate who's going to do the acceptance test. So they don't automatically put themselves as, but obviously they need to put the SANAS accreditation number on the application form that this is the person that is going to do the acceptance test. So for the new machine, the control, it's, it's, it's there, hopefully. 
but that's on our side, that's what we see and that's what we require uh, uh, or this is what we request uh, so that we know that the machine will be installed by the supplier and will be tested by these inspection bodies. The issue that you are raising, it has to do with the second hand machine. If 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 I understand correctly, that is correct. Oh, yeah, in most cases, the second hand machine that's the problem, and um, not only in dental, also in veterinary, which is we classify mm -hmm. it as non medical. It's a huge problem. So, on our form, we now say we now uh, we only asking uh, if I'm not mistaken, who's gonna be the inspection board, and we do ask which company is going to assist with the move. But we don't have a database of these companies. Uh, so we are correct that we, 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 sometimes a person will put a name there and that if that name is resonating with the names of the suppliers, then we are happy with it. But if it's an unknown name, then we don't have anywhere to check where this company is coming from. Now, the problem with that is that um, those companies they don't know the rest of the process. We found a big medical machine in that was sealed in one province and installed in another province. Uh, it's a case we are busy investigating now. And my first question was, who installed the machine? When they gave me that name, um, I was shocked that this is this person. They are they call themselves engineers and, and medical mm. suppliers and whatnot, but. They don't appear anywhere. So this is now in my attention, and it means we need to add. We need to to. Um, sorry, my apologies. I don't know whose phone is that, but it means we need to now uh, zoom in 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 that form to say, whenever we get this, obviously now those companies now needs to be registered registered where and what could be the process. And all, and all of those things. So we need now to polish uh, uh, in terms of how we, we manage who is getting to install because the information does come through the forms, but um, we didn't have any requirements for those companies, uh, unfortunately. So obviously now if the license holder knows or if the inspection board knows, then that's fine. But um, we, 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 I mean, the, it's better when the inspection policy eventually goes and and check and correct if the things are need to be corrected. But but um, I mean, where the inspection board is not even involved, then that's how the machine get uh, crossing flows without us knowing, and it's a big problem because if the machine is is moved by a existing supplier, then that supplier will always tell the license holder that this is the process, this is what needs to be in place. This is, you need to get an inspection body and all of those things. Then that becomes um, easy for us. So we, 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 we have to, we have to fix that um, on our, on our forms first. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Swart. Uh, I think. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is a question from Justin. You can go ahead, Justin, with your question. All right, I seem to see that uh, he is missing now. Uh, Pia, you can go ahead with your question. Um, hi, good, good morning, guys. Um, luckily, I don't have um, Adidas in the background. Um, good morning, sir. <laughs> Um, just a quick one. Um, our role again, can we just reiterate our role with regards to sub annuals? Um, reporting a, a document, document it on our on our documentation with regards to the daily, weekly, quarterly, six monthly test. That's the responsibility of the license holder. Do we still need to verify that with the customer, check it, and then document it on our documents or reports? Um, then, if so, in some cases, the responsible person are not available on site at the day of inspection. Um, so we're not sure if they actually do the quarterly test. 
And if we submit these results as probably a three-part question, uh, submit the results as a non-compliance to, to SAPRA, will you then hold those test results as indicated as fail or not done? Will you hold those results uh, against them when they apply for a new license? Because that also has some other implications as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Pierre, for the question. I'm not sure, Natalie, are you able to answer? Uh, I can answer, but uh, maybe it's not going to be a response. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a response to Pierre. I do think that um, further discussion would be required because we would have to develop a format for that. Um, so it's not something that I think we can address here. I think it's one of those points you mentioned in your introduction that should be put down. And maybe I can ask Pierre to send me a mail, then we can forward it and maybe discuss it um, at the SDC meeting. Um, I'm, I know I didn't answer your question, but uh, uh, a solution going forward and uh, uh, for how we can address this properly um, would, would then be my suggestion. All right, I'm, thank I'm you. In, I'm in agreement, uh, Natalie. Thank you. Oh, uh, great. Graham, you can go ahead with the question, sir. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, at present, there's no proof of qualification for an, uh, an engineer to install an X-ray machine, even from those companies that are applying for uh, um, a license to sell in South Africa. Now, every inspection body's got to have a qualification or some form of minimum qualification in order to test it. These installers are actually installing the machines and they obviously are testing and calibrating them as well. If you do a government tender, uh, you, you have to, and you're supplying equipment to the government, they want to see, in many, many cases, they want to see a certificate of qualification from the manufacturing uh, company uh, to say that the installer is qualified to do the installation that they're doing. Because in dental, we are coming across major problems, huge disasters. This is just a quick buck for people to make. They import a machine and just sell it. They not, and after that, they just don't give a damn whether it's mounted correctly or falling off the wall or drifting or whatever happens. So is there any way that we can uh, address that somehow? Uh, thank, thanks. Um, I just want to make sure, uh, is it Graham or Justin who was asking the question? No, it's Graham. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. Um, I see Natalie's hand is up. I'm not sure you want to respond or... Uh, no, not, not to Graham's question. I have another question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can I just answer, answer Graham, then you can come. Um, Thanks, Graham, for the question. Um, okay, so so usually we 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 are actually not the custodians of scopes of practice in terms of the professions that are, are, are. so we cannot prescribe. Um, we can we can say that the person must be qualified, but we are not the custodian of their scopes of um, uh, uh, practice. Uh, the engineers and installers whatever the case might be but and then when we issue a, a license to a supplier uh, we we do not require them to give us uh, their engineers or anything like that so but that that is based on the assumption that obviously as a company you wouldn't run a company like a a a, a like a spaza shop <laughs> so you'll have the appropriate trained people it's also based on the assumption, so we do not ask that question at the moment. Uh, and then it's something that we have to take down and see if we should ask that question. Uh, but obviously, if we then ask that question, it means we now need those things to be submitted and, and, and verified and all of those things, which becomes a another added 
um, admin on our side. Um, at the moment, we do um, we do uh, put conditions for 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 the actual practitioners that at least this machine must be operated by qualified people and uh, their scope of practice is then managed through their various um, uh, councils like HPCSA or whatever the case might be. So when it again this issue would be I, I would assume it will be more prevalent to those uh, illegal imports obviously and we don't have control of at, at this point in time or much control of, uh, but I, I, I mean, uh, big companies, uh, as somebody mentioned that they are big companies, we assume that they are they are putting the, 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 the right people. So that will ju just tell me that maybe the smaller companies are the problem, which we then can deal with um, as time goes on. But at the moment, we don't ask the, the, the qualifications of installers. Um, yes, Natalie, I think you, you wanted to say something. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mabope. My question is completely unrelated, and um, I'm happy to for, for us to just have a look at Justin's question on the chat. Um, it's regarding uh, abuse of the IB license number um, on the RCDent applications, I presume, for people just to get the forms through the system to actually end up with a license. Oh, OK, all right, all right, I see. <laughs> um, yeah, correct, thanks, Justin. I think you were having issues when you were you were trying to 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 talk, but. Um, can I bring Debbie here? Is, is Debbie on the thing? Um, I am. Uh, yeah, if you can see the question from Justin, maybe try to assist. I'll check quickly. Um, I'm just I just want to make sure is this the question my question is if we have large amount is we have a large amount of secondhand dealers that use our inspection body number in, on the forms and we and then they never make contact with um you to have the tests done um currently um if they um provide that your inspection number or any other inspection body's number on the form and um, it's a number that has been registered with us we don't query it at the moment um, I don't know if the we can uh, we can discuss it um, I don't know if we can contact you with each and every application that we receive to confirm um, that you are um, the relevant inspection body um, Yes, we get a lot of applications, so I don't know if that is possible. Mr. Mapope, maybe you can come in there. Yeah, thanks, thanks, David. Um, yeah, I wanted you to come in because I know you you will know the the number of applications. Uh, so you are correct. Um, we don't query it at the moment, and we only query if they don't put anything and we just ask then who's your inspection bodies in this process. So now that you've brought that they could be, uh, I mean, they will also know we picked up another name uh, for a responsible person. The person told us that it looks like I have so many places I'm responsible and I don't have an idea. So people were using that person's information as a responsible person. Uh, because probably he's in good standing or whatever the case might be. So now that person somehow find, found out that people are using his information and informed us, then we can certainly tell him that this is where you are and, and all of those things. And then we, we, we can then deal with those people who, who, who use his information. So at the moment, um, I, I yeah, I, I don't have an answer for this one. Uh, I would, I would, I would say uh, between myself and and 
and DB, we can we can work around a solution on how we can uh, probably uh, query or inform. So I would I also assume it's maybe it's not only happening here; it's also happening in in, in the rest of the inspection body uh, inspection bodies. So we we will have to figure out a way of notifying you guys. Probably when we issue the license, we can then issue the uh, when we issue the, the communication, we can then CC you in it so that you can see that somebody is using. So something like that, we we might we might we might figure out something. So, but thanks for the question and the concern. You can also put it in writing in an email so that we can we can remember it, um, uh, or you can remind us in future uh, if then nothing happens to it. But we, uh, Debbie, will take it down and then and then discuss it in our meeting. Uh, over to you, Chair. Well, I thank you so much. Uh, I think Natalie wanted to add. You can go ahead, yes. Natalie. Thank you. Thank you, Lazola. Um, my question is for the inspection bodies. Um, it, would, it, it would be interesting to know what type of interaction happens with yourselves and the license holder at the point where they contact you guys to come and perform the inspection. Um, what type of information exchange happens? Maybe if, uh, if somebody from the dental side and somebody from the medical side um, could respond, just for us to also understand um, the process better. Thank you. Um, Chair, I see hands. Maybe there's. Uh, yeah, I think Graham wanted to uh, to add. Yeah, you can go ahead, Graham. Um, as far as I'm aware, and I'm sure I'm correct on this, uh, that that is uh, all in our documentation. How we, uh, what we do when we get to the uh, uh, to to the inspection, how we book the inspection, everything like that is uh, is actually documented in our SANES uh, accreditation documentation, and that is checked every year by SANES. So I hope that oh. helps. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Uh, Gail, you can go ahead with your question. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hallelujah. Um, yes, hello. Good morning, Mr. Mapopi and uh, Mrs. Slapi, and thank you for saying that you appreciate us. Um, I can tell you that uh, speaking, I think, for just about all of us, we actually don't feel appreciated at all. Sometimes it's almost like a battleground, be, be that as it may. There's two things on the database uh, that I want to query. Um, when a machine is sold to a client and the machine's not even in the country, there's no serial number. We've been asked in the past, if you please, will you, when you inspect it, will you provide us with that generator serial number for our database, which we do. But I never see it changed on the database. I never see it added. So I think, am I wasting my time doing this? So, you know, sometimes there's an incorrect number, sometimes there's no number. So whatever it is, I write in the comment section, please note generator number is, and then that's the end of that. I never hear anything after that, nothing changes. Um, then the other thing that's happening, and this is maybe an IT problem, um, when a company submits a component report and they just pick any X-ray machine, all that information is removed except that testing date. So unfortunately, that is still staying on against that machine. Uh, for example, I know the machine is due in January, but in May, May, somebody went out and did CR or something like that, used that line to put their results back, and that date stays. So it it's screw, skews our entire database up. So those are the two things, the one about the dates and the one about the incorrect serial numbers on the database, and we don't see it getting added or changed uh, on subsequent databases. All right. Um, thanks. Thanks, um, Madam. I think, I think uh, unfortunately, this will be the last question we're answering. Uh, I see Graham's hand is up again um, because of time. Um, so, um, to answer quickly, uh, this uh, the first the serial number. Please carry on doing that. Uh, we have dedicated somebody to 
to actually look on and in those external numbers but at the moment he's looking on the older results because we found out that all the machine that they don't have certain numbers certain numbers are available on the inspection body reports so we have somebody that is going slowly backwards to um to fix those things and then going forward we'll be able to pick it up so i was i was made aware uh, actually it was an issue when somebody was trying to move a machine we couldn't pick it up uh, which machine it is on the system so carry on please doing giving us the certain numbers and then alternatively, obviously, this is now a discussion with the suppliers of medical equipment because it's not an issue for dental. We get certain numbers on application. It's issue for medical because we 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 allow the machine to be um, to be to to be to be to be on the therapist without the certain number on on their first application. So, because the alternative is to, is to say, no, let's wait for the serial number before we put the machine, which now takes us back to the olden days. So, um, so going forward, yeah, I mean, there's an, 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 other ways that we can fix this problem for ourselves on our side, which once once we once we we are sure of of how we want to do it, we'll we'll communicate it as well to the good, parties involved good. but at the at the meantime we i, I will really appreciate if you carry on putting those uh, certain numbers yeah, and then I, um your second question now it has left my mind uh the um, component submission date starts okay. on against the x-ray machine which is a wrong date of testing of x-ray machine it doesn't get removed um just just let me confirm not how it does the component get its own row or it stays with the no, machine no no, it's 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 actually linked to the to the machine. Um, but but can I just ask you, girl, to mm. kindly um, send me a mail with those specific numbers because we have been checking those results for the last twenty four months, and we've actually been blocking the if the component has a test today and tomorrow the generator number expires, those results get blocked and then uploaded at a later stage when we do get the rest of the imaging chain. So if there are still outliers like that appearing on the database and you pick it up, please communicate it to us so that we can try to rectify it. You know how many pages that's going to take? There are many, 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 many. If I look at a particular inspection body and I see their number next to my machine, oh, them again, them again. Well, them well, again. then you, you don't have to do it in all in one go. Um, let's let's oh. let's. Let's just approach us with approach it with how much we can do. Um, you don't have to submit it. Go through the entire ES list that contains of six thousand machines. I'm not expecting exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, just that's just do I'm it saying. in batches. Yeah. yeah, do it in batches. Mm -hmm. As you come across, let okay. me know, and then we can tackle it. Take it from okay. there. All right. Thank you very much, Natalie. All right. All right, colleagues. Thank you so much um, for your for the attendance, and uh, thank you so much for. The, for this uh, engagement, I see that there are also uh, questions. They are they uh, they are asking about the following dates for the meeting. Um, I'm sure Mr. Mapopo will find a way, and we can. Um, I mean, we communicate with uh, with you guys. Um, so at this point in time, I would like to close the meeting. Um, we'll keep the questions that are also on the chat, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.